a lethal rock fishing method that catches fish and minimizes snags. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a very simple method of rock fishing that I've used for probably 40 years. I absolutely love it. And it's very effective at catching a variety of fish. It's really enjoyable. You don't get many snags. You do lose the odd hooks, but certainly not like if you're fishing on the bottom. So make sure that you like and subscribe. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell. Let's start fishing. This is such a simple method of fishing. You actually don't use a sinker. It's what's called fishing with an unweighted bait. And I am, on this occasion, I've got one rod. I'm using one type of rig and I've only got one bait. Super simple. I have these hooks, which I purchased. They're what's called ganged hooks and they're pre-made. So in this pack, there's three sets. I'll just get one out. You can see there are three hooks that are joined together. Now, all I'm going to do is tie my line on there. That's it. And I'm ready to fish. So I'll just grab my line here. I'm not even going to put a swivel, a snap swivel, nothing. I'm just going to tie my line on there. You could put a snap swivel on there, but it's actually not critical that you do that. I'm just using a clinch knot. Okay, so I've, I've tied my hooks on. That is the entirety of my fishing rig for this session. I will be putting a whole pilchard on there and flicking it out into the wash relatively close to shore and I'm going to burley as well just to get some scent into the water to attract the fish. So now I'm just gonna put some bait in my bait bucket and we'll walk over to the rocks and start fishing. I've just been rinsing these in a bit of water so I'm gonna break break a couple off. Beautiful, look at that. So funny, I opened my um, my bait bucket and there's two pilchards in there from last night. <laughs> but I left them there, but I can use them for barely. I might put a bait on now before I walk over. Now you've seen me do this many times, I'm sure if you've watched some of my videos. So we're going to put the um, hook, first hook in, second hook in, third hook through the eye and that'll hold on really well. Now before I came down to this spot I sat in my car for a little while from a higher level and I was just watching the waves break and checking out this location fully aware of the conditions before I came down here. I actually have an incoming tide it's currently 20 to 5 but high tides not till 8 p.m. So the tide is barely halfway in and also the swell is building. I was checking out the surf report, the swell report, and the waves are growing. So I have a rising tide and a growing swell. So that's something I need to be completely aware of. But once I'd watched a few set waves coming in, I felt relatively comfortable with where I'm fishing. I've also got my life jacket on and my spikes on my feet as well. But it's pretty good conditions. Now essentially what I'm going to be doing is flicking out my pilchard like that, flicking it out as far as I can. When it hits the water, it just will naturally float down slowly like that because there's no sinker. That's a great way to fish. Now, I expect to catch some fish. I'm only gonna fish for barely an hour because it'll be dark soon. I expect to catch some fish. I expect to catch probably salmon, tailor and trevally. However, when I fish in a place like this, I put myself in a position to catch pretty much anything. If there's snapper there, if kingfish came past, bonito, even a mulloway, you catch all those fish in this type of location. So when you're burling and using a whole pilchard like that, you really put yourself in a position where you can catch lots of fish. In between the set waves, I'm watching the waves. Fortunately, where I'm standing, I see the waves coming a long time in advance. But while I've got some calm water in between, I'm standing near the edge and just keeping my eye on the water. When you fish like this, because you've got no sinker, 
sometimes it's hard to feel the end. So you've got to really minimise the amount of slack line because you want to stay in touch with the bait. But certainly when you get some bites or a fish, because there's no sinker, they grab it and they take it pretty quickly. Now I've just thrown some burley into this little wash and I've got that pilted out there just floating around. This particular location yesterday was completely flat. The water was crystal clear, there was no wash at all. So, you would catch fish in that scenario, but it's much better when there's a little bit of wash to stir up the food for the fish. Now I think my bait has washed in a little bit, so I'm gonna chuck it out again. So I'm, I'm probably only casting about 35, 40 metres with this unweighted pilchard. If I had wind behind me, I could probably get another 10 or 15 metres at least. But there's really very little wind right now. I've spent many hours fishing this way over the years and very often at night off the rocks, you know, in good conditions. Now I can see some waves coming out the back. So I'll keep, I need to keep my eye on that. Might actually wind my line in before the waves get here. Usually there's only a couple of main waves in a set. I don't think they're huge, but you'll notice behind me probably, oh, I wasn't, sometimes it's a bit de deceptive. The way you think the waves are gonna break up more than they do, but it's better to be safe. So I'm gonna chuck a bit more burly out there. Just get that lovely, oily, fishy, pilchard smell in the water. Oh, here comes a little wave. There's lots of barnacles on the rocks here. Not that I need them with my, my spikes on, but they certainly help you to grip. I'm using 20 pound line on this occasion. I limit the line to about 20 pound because if you go heavier, it really impacts your ability to cast a pilchard with no sinker. I've done this plenty of times off the rocks with, I've done this plenty of times off the rocks with 15 pound line because you can cast a pilchard a long way with 15 pound line. The only issue is that you've got to be skilled in landing a quality fish on that lighter line. So I'm trying to keep in touch. I'm trying to keep in touch with my bait at all times. If necessary, I'm winding up slack line just so that I can just feel that light bait of the pilchard just drifting around in the wash. Now I actually haven't had a bite yet. I've broken up several pilchards and chucked them out, but haven't had a bite so far. When you're fishing off the rocks like this, you need a 12 foot rod, because you've got to keep the slack wound up and keep your line off the rocks where it can get caught. Because just down below me here, there's barnacles, there's conjavoy, there's all sorts of things. So a short rod is not gonna work for this type of fishing. I can see a big wave coming over there. So I think I need to step back just a little bit anyways.
So the water came over the rock then by about six inches. Just gonna whack my bait back out again. I'm actually gonna step back a little bit because I'm not quite sure what this next wave's gonna do. It certainly looks quite large. Oh, it's not too bad. It's sort of gone along the rock sideways. This rock is very flat. So there are no kind of secret holes or anything here that I could actually trip or fall into a hole or anything like that. It's just a flat shelf. There's lots of places like this up and down the coast. I'm facing north at the moment. So in this particular spot, I'm on, a, on the northern side of a headland. Look at it coming through the bay. There's a little, that swell's definitely building. But look at it, look at that wave. What a cracker. Bit of power in that. Gonna walk over here to my little position. Just tighten the drag just a little bit. Okay. Chuck a bit more burly out there. Something's got to come for a sniff. Okay, here goes the burly. So let that waft around. That full moon is rising. I'll tell you what. Well, I think it's a full moon. It's very close to it. The moon looks beautiful over the water. Okay. Okay, so I've got out a fair way. The wash is actually, the waves and the wash are washing my bait towards me a little bit. I just would like it to stay out that bit further. Although the burly is not going out there, the burly is fairly close to the rocks. Still, the scent of it should permeate the water. The area that I'm fishing is a combination of sand and reef. I can see in front of me some dark patches of rock and also some light patches of sand just straight in front of me. Now when I wind my line in, if I don't have a fish, I have to be careful on the edge because if I wind it too slow, I could hook the rocks and get snagged. So if I'm pulling my line in, I need to keep my rod tip up and wind it in quickly up and over the rocks. Or I need to kind of skip it up over the top of a wave. So I've got a buffer of wave between my hooks and the rocks. That moon is going to shine even brighter and brighter as that sun fades a bit more. Come on fish, I haven't had a trevally or a salmon bite. You can catch brim in there as well on the pilchards. Oh, hang on. I got a fish. I bet you it's a salmon. But that's the quickest landing you've ever seen. <laughs> what a scream. Look at that. No, it's a salmon. Well, there you go. There's the customary salmon. Oops, I'll lift him up. Oh. So that's a customary salmon, <laughs> where there's millions of them around here. Oops, there he goes. He's swimming away. <laughs> they got him on those uh, hooks. I'll just tidy them up, a little wave coming. He's obviously, they're starting to respond to that burly that I threw in. Bit of stuff in there, whack the line back out again. What else is out there? That's the thing. Alrighty. I'm getting a pretty good cast in. 
considering that there's uh, no wind to aid my or assist my casting, I'm getting a little bit of distance. But these conditions are slightly challenging because there's a fair bit of water movement and then every so often you'll see a wave like this one which is approaching. So I'll just be keeping my eye on that. It's kind of, um, that one's faded off a little bit. Hey, I'm getting a bite I thought then. Thought I might have been getting a bite then. You'll notice that I'm always winding a little bit, keeping in touch with my bait. The idea of fishing this way is that the bait looks more natural because it's not impeded by a sinker and it's just moving around like a, a piece of dead fish would in the water. So I just had a bite but I, and he took my bait but missed him. Just couldn't quite, didn't really quite connect. The fish actually swam towards me with the bait, which, um, just gonna flick it out there. All right, well, there's no really big waves coming just now. I'm gonna walk to my left a little bit. I think I had a little bit of a bite then. Yeah, I'm gonna stand in the corner here I'd probably prefer to be fishing further out that way, but under the conditions, this is safer just here. Okay, so I've got a fish. What is it? Is it another salmon? Probably. Got to watch the waves and um, it's coming in towards the rocks, this guy. Coming along the edge. Yep, gonna lift him up. So it seems like on the south coast, everywhere you go, whether you're on the rocks or you're on the beach, there's an abundance of salmon, which is great. going to walk back away from the edge a little bit. So you can see, I'll just grab him. You can see I've got no sinker. All I've got is my um, hooks with my pilchard on there. Oftentimes when you're using gang hooks, multiple hooks get in the fish. Going to just gently get this out. Okay, so the main place is hooked, just just there, sort of in the nose area. I'm going to let him go. Okay, so I've got two salmon. Haven't been fishing all that long. Just going to chuck a little bit more burley out. Got some old pilchards here that I'm just going to break into pieces and throw out in there. Got to feed the fish a little bit. I always try and throw the burley as far as I can, but it's a little bit limiting how far you can, um, how far you can get. Whoa, look at that. Alrighty, he sailed out. He sailed out quite a long way, so. How's my drag? Yeah, my drag's pretty good. So, I'm just gonna hold my line down a little bit low and wind up the slack and just try and keep the line direct in a straight line to where my bait is so I can potentially feel any bites. And hopefully it'll stay out there and drift down a bit lower towards the bottom. I'm not sure if it's a full moon tonight or not. Hang on, I'm getting a bite. Yep. Got a fish. What is it? Is it another salmon? Probably. It's sort of doing that sort of thing. Might not be though. Oh no, I think it is. Yep.
Just going to walk away from the edge a little bit. So that burley is obviously doing the trick. I was speaking to a gentleman last who fished here last night and wanted to catch some salmon but didn't get any. He just caught fit undesirables. But um, they certainly respond to burley getting all that pilchard out there. You can see there once again just the line tied to the hook, no sinker, nothing. Just tossing that pilchard out in the wash. It's a very effective way to fish. So I've caught three salmon in about 20 minutes or so. I don't need any so I'm letting them all go. Using this method I've caught snapper, mulloway, kingfish, just about every species you care to mention off the rocks. And when you do this, you put yourself in that position where you can land some really awesome fish. And I've fished with a lot of guys over the years. And you know, really, you don't know when those fish are going to be there. You just need to put yourself in that position. Some big waves coming in just now. You've got to put yourself in that position. And some nights the snapper will just be there. Or the mulloway may be there. It's just a matter of you putting yourself in that position and fishing in the right way and you're in, a, you're in a place where you can catch some good fish. So I'm going to let this guy go and have a reload, see if I get another salmon or something different. I'm just keeping my eye on where I'm walking, even though I know the rock's flat here. Just got to always watch where I'm treading. I let the foamy water dissipate so I can see through to the rocks, so I know where I'm going. Beautiful. You can go back in there. How beautiful is this? Just a stunning afternoon with the moon rising over the ocean. Just amazing, really. I wouldn't be doing this tonight in the dark, certainly. And I've got a few more minutes before the light gets too low. So, to see what else happens. Oh, I think I've got a squid. I've got a squid. The squid's grabbed it, but I'm not gonna land it because it's pretty rare, pretty rare to land a squid on hooks. It's grabbed the pilchard, they love pilchards. But the thing is, it's pretty rare for the barb of a hook to actually catch on a squid. I can feel it tugging. You can see my line. You know, you can see the squid tugging. It's actually a squid, it's not a fish. I love eating squid, but when I start to put some pressure on him and pull it, he's gonna let go of the bait, unfortunately. Or maybe, maybe he will get hooked. But I expect, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring him in. Maybe he's that hungry that he doesn't want to let go. I wonder how big he is. Oh yeah, he let go. I'm a little bit surprised that, not totally surprised, but squid don't normally like it if it's too turbulent. But they're obviously out there. This is a good time of night for squid. Okay, I've got a fish. What have I got? Another salmon, maybe. He's gonna bring it in pretty quick, actually. Just gonna get it near the edge of the rocks here. And I'm gonna lift it up. So, well, this is salmon number four. So at least I'm catching fish. So just gotta watch those ganged hooks flying around. So, I trust you've enjoyed this video. This method that I've been teaching you tonight is awesome. I love it, I do it a lot. And as I mentioned, I've caught so many fish this way. I highly recommend it. Conditions were a little bit challenging this afternoon. Got to watch the waves, but still certainly worth a fish. So make sure that you like and subscribe. Say hi in the comments, ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And I'll see you next week in another video.